cutters are one of the most versatile tools in the shop. They can do a variety of tasks including putting edge profiling on like in moldings. Um, they can create different types of joinery by removing material and creating slots of different shapes. And they can even cut, be used to cut out templates. So to give you an idea of the different things that a router can do, take a quick look at these router bits and they'll give you a sense of what I'm talking about. So for example, most of these bits up in the top here are used for creating edge profiles. And you can see there's a variety of different shapes. Some carve out a curve into the wood called a cove. Some do a round over. Some will create custom shapes. This is a Roman OG. And then there's a whole category also of, um, of joinery cutting bits. So the most common of which is a straight cutting bit like this, which makes a straight slot. And then, but you'll also see bits that create wedge-shaped slots or dovetails. And there's a whole variety of other ones as well. So if you can look at the router bits, you can kind of get a sense of the shape that they make. Um, now router bits come in two different sizes, and this is important to understand because it will help you pick router bits and also determine what kind of router to get. So if we look at, for example, these two bits here. These are essentially the same the bits, two bits that do the same function. They both cut out a three-quarter inch slot. Um, they're three-quarter inches in diameter this way. But you can see on the bottom they have two different size shanks. And so I want to draw your attention to this because these are the two most common size shanks, a quarter inch and a half inch. And most routers can accommodate both of these size shanks in their collets simply by changing out the collet. So we have two different size collets. The collet is what holds the bit into the router. So you can either use the one that holds a quarter inch bit in there, or you can use the one that holds the half inch bit. Either way, they both screw into the router at the base and you're good to go. But let's look at the routers themselves. Routers have uh, a lot of different controls on them to help make them operate smoothly and safely. And I've got two different models of router out here right now to show you. One is a, called a plunge router and it, its basic function is to, if you need to start routing in the middle of a piece of wood, you can plunge down in like a drill press and do your routing and then plunge back out. So it's a safe way to plunge into the wood. The other kind of router that you'll see is a stationary router. Stationary router is just the same thing as a plunge router but doesn't plunge. And so you put the bit in and you'll either be working along an edge so you can come into the edge safely, route away, or you'll come in from the end of the wood and go in and come out the other side. Or you could stop in the middle and turn it off as well. So those two are the two basic types of handheld routers that we have. Now either one of these require, or they're using either one, they require some type of guide system. Neither of these are suitable for free handing. Um, the router has a very powerful motor up top and it will tend to kind of try and move out of your hands if you let it. So you always need guide rails um, of some kind, jigs, or guide rails that go on the router itself to keep it aligned. Now the other thing that these routers have in common is that they are variable speed. And most routers are like this. You can change the speed that the bit is rotating. Why would you want to do that? The main reason is that different bits, depending on their size, need to be operated at lower or higher speeds. And the larger the bit you have, um, the lower the speed you're going to want to operate it at. So imagine essentially that you know we're taking out three quarters of an inch of material versus a quarter inch of material. The router's doing a lot more work uh, to, to remove the more material, and also the bit is spinning faster at the outside of this um, at the outside of the circle than this one is. So it's. That's the reason we slow down the speed. With the bigger router bit, it's actually moving faster at the outside edge. Now, usually your router bit package will tell you the speed to operate it at the optimum speed, so you don't have to have to know or memorize that for every router bit. So the speed can be adjusted on the router, though, up here, and there's two different styles I have here. One is on this plunge router, it actually has a dial that, only, that just goes from one to four. And you can see one is the low speed, and you just dial it over to four. There's no way you would know what speeds those were unless you looked in the manual. 
but they actually do correspond pretty closely to what's on this router. And this is typical for these, these size routers. Your, your low end of the speed is about 10,000 RPMs. Your high end is about 23, 24,000 RPM. And so depending on what size router bit, you're going to adjust the speed here. Thank you.